Welcome to One This Wisdom Wednesday. I'm Tiffany Brown Bush and I'm helping you through hump day. And it's my passion to be able to help super women live fit with happy hormones. And I wanna jump right into today's uh, Wellness Wisdom Wednesday topic, which of course is coming out of the Fit for Life Challenge that's currently going on, which is a program that um, is 21 days with a week of prep. Uh, and just as a fun fact, the week of prep is when we get your head right and get your kitchen right and you know your pantry, your refrigerator, all that stuff. And we get rid of those things that are blocking uh, your success and the foods that are boxed out. So it's a, actually a 21 day program, a three week program with a week of prep in addition. <clears throat> so a lot of the topics that are coming up for me with Wellness Wisdom Wednesday are a result of the great um, participation by the challengers within the group. So shout out to the challengers um, because I love you ladies and I so am grateful and so appreciative and I hope you can feel me that comes from the bottom of my heart. Um, that you have let me in and some of you I told you um, personally have been on my hit list I was trying to get in because I knew that if you would just let me share with you all that I have been blessed with learning and um, you know sharing with other women uh, we could make some serious strides with your health and your weight loss goals and so when I say um, I love my challengers, I do because uh, these women have been going hard in the paint um, and they support each other on a daily basis. So um, just just thrilled I get to be a part of all this. So with all that said, and, and to my challengers, thank you. Um, there have been great uh, questions that have been coming up within the group. And so all these questions apply, of course, to people who aren't in the group because, you know, we've got about... 43 active challengers in the group um, and then 50 people total uh, roughly in the group actually that are um, nutrition clients. Um, so I'm getting a lot of, of what I think is um, important or um, going to be significant for people in general that I would probably be serving. All that to be said, today's topic is about one, staying on track. Um, we you know, within our group, we have people who are mentors who have done the first round of the challenge and, um, you know, are like, ooh, we're at that five week mark, six week mark. Things aren't as fun. The novelty is worn off. So, you know, I'm speaking to those mentors who are suffering from challenge fatigue, um, as well as people who are new, who are, um, you know, trying to, my new challengers who are trying to get used to the protocols and are finding that things are tempting and, and just trying to deal with that. So, okay, so I've got this issue that I want to address um, of trying to stay motivated. And then I've got this idea that I wanted to tackle of <sighs> feeling like you won't ever be able to have something again. Okay, and I'm going to start with that. Um, and I think that's come up for challengers, new challengers and mentor challengers. This idea of I won't ever be able to eat this again or I won't ever be able to um, celebrate with food again in a certain way. And um, that is a scary thought. You know, um, if you're in the group or just period work, working with Fit for Life and you are, you know, 30 years old, 35, 50, and you've had all these years of eating a certain way, and then someone tells you you can't have something, you can end up focusing on that thing you can't have, and I can't wait till that day where I can have a little bit of something. I've worked with alcoholics in my training as a mental health therapist. Um, I have worked with many eating disorder clients, which I really love working with binge eaters and bulimics. Um, and, um, I've worked somewhat with people with harder substance abuse, uh, issues. I like addiction. I don't like working with, um, hardcore addiction to, to, to drugs, but I have worked with those clients. Here's what I have found. Um, what I found when I was learning all of this is that on one end of the continuum, I had these, these patients that I was encountering that had these hardcore addictions that were alcoholics, raging alcoholics, uh, were um, eating disorder, you know, like hospitalized eating disorder patients. And over here in my fitness practice, um, I had people who were trying to lose weight um, 
and just stuck on certain foods that were getting in the way of them being able to lose weight. And what I struggled with and what people thought I was nutty for, and now there's this great world of integrative mental health therapy. Now now I'm not crazy, okay? But, but when when I when I was saying this in, in training, I I was a nut that, you know, now they have nothing to do with each other. It's the same freaking continuum. Okay. It's like a lot of the same stuff that was going on over here, I kept hearing over here, just this was a bigger, more out of control version. But when you say to me, you can't eat one of whatever it is. When you say to me that you use food to numb. When you say to me that you're a sugar addict and you know you shouldn't be doing something logically, but you can't make yourself not do it, you have similar features to a diagnosable issue. Am I saying you're crazy? No. Everyone always gets so up in arms. No. I'm saying that if you kind of look like them, the same things may apply. My reaction to you may need to be similar and the same techniques may need to apply. Okay, so what do I tell a heroin addict? You can have a little girl. You you can go get high every every three weeks. <laughs> okay. Or what do I tell the alcoholic? Um, one drink won't kill you. You can probably handle one drink. The the alcoholic who routinely drinks multiple bottles of whatever it is every night. So when you tell me that you are a sugar addict, I say to you, you may have to box out sugar. And I ask you to focus on all the damage it's done, the weight you couldn't lose, how bad it made you feel, the brain fog, the allergies, the chronic yeast infections, the lack of energy, the uh, weight loss resistance. You focus on, on how it made you feel and the, the struggles you had the, every morning getting up, putting on something and not liking the way you looked and your body and your clothes. Focus on that as opposed to, I cannot live my life without this food because that food is why we even have a relationship and I need that connection to be there. And I think a lot of times it's not. So then what do you do? So what do you tell somebody who has a drug problem? Find another way to get high. Seriously, find something else that makes you feel good, that gets serotonin going, get, gets your brain um, excited and stimulated. Find a different way to celebrate because the way you're celebrating does not work for you. It currently makes you sick. What do I tell the alcoholic? Baby, find a different way to de-stress at the end of your day. Find other friends who don't want you to spend all your time at the bar. Why do you think we have the challenge group? So you have 40 other people who are doing the same thing because the rest of the world is going to tell you that this is too restrictive. Um, she doesn't know what she's talking about. You should be able to do X, Y, Z. Please look at them when they're telling you this because oftentimes they are all, um, also struggling with the same issue. So I always think that's fascinating. Um, and, and that it's not normal. You should be able to have these foods and restrictions, not a whatever. Seriously, I talk in the group about that evil diet voice and a lot of times when you start to step back and think about it, it's your girlfriend who's sabotaging you or your mama who struggled her whole life with her health issues. That's, that's that voice that you're hearing. You can find a different way to celebrate. You can still use food to celebrate. You just can't use the toxic foods. You just can't use the foods you don't have control over. Okay, and I really want you to think about that. These are called lateral shifts, okay? Can't have sweet potato pie, but can I have a mock version of the sweet potato pie? Can I, uh, Tiffany, Tiffany eyes it? I love that. I saw that in the group. Can I do that to it to make it a workable pie? I'm not saying you can't ever have dessert. I'm saying you can't have toxic dessert. And I've shared a, a couple of videos recently about leaky gut. I really want you guys to, to dig in and look at those um, because they explain so much of what I've been going on and on and on about um, here recently. Okay, so I'm, I'm long, long today with this. I want to get to what to do when you're struggling with motivation. The brain works. Um, you'll find this. You get a new car. You get a new bag. You get some new shoes. Uh, you get a new whatever. Get a new job. And then give it six months. And the novelty effect wears off. And this is actually something that happens with the brain. It doesn't, 
the thing that was triggered that lit up your brain because it was new and it was what you wanted and blah, 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 it, it goes away. Um, the same happens with um, the new, changing your diet and um, the novelty of being on a new meal plan. <clears throat> so first, the novelty has worn off. Work the novelty piece by trying different recipes. Work the novelty piece by, um, you know, changing up how you prepare your meals. A lot of times when I'm cooking, how I serve the food matters, where we eat matters. Um, so I'll try to make things more novel. The other thing is... Um, you know what to do. You don't know what to do when the situation changes. That's called an external trigger. So if you now have an external trigger that you've been able to identify, you're going to have to come up with a solution to deal with that situation. If you're going back to food because you're busy, life is hectic, because you're stressed out, because you're not planning, not prepping, not cooking, blah, 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 you've hit one of your triggers. And instead of giving into it, you've got to do the work of figuring out, wow, I see how I gained that 50 pounds because this is my life. This is my real life, you know, outside of the challenge or outside of fit for life. And I have got to figure out how to deal with this because guess what? I chose this job. I chose this career. I had those kids. I married that man. And I have got to figure out how to deal with the stressors that come with it without self-soothing with food, especially toxic food, okay? So when I'm in, in therapy or um, heavy um, coaching with a client who's, who's you know, kind of doing some of the therapeutic-like stuff, we actually have um, a, a protocol that we will go through to identify what happened and the triggers and then how to deal with it differently, what you would do differently, how to look at it, how to set yourself up for success in the future. I want you to look at doing that if you're finding that you're struggling all I hear is that you hit one of your triggers that wasn't in existence during whatever um, honeymoon phase we were in when the novelty had worn off. Um, and the last thought there is that willpower is a muscle. It is a muscle that will fatigue. Okay? So if you think you can do squats and burpees and push-ups all day long and not be tired at 3 p.m., um, you, you're uh, in for a rude awakening, okay? It's the same thing with being on top of your game with work, being on top of your game at home, being on top of your game with your food plan. You've got to build some, like take a break time in there because what will happen is your body will run out of gas. You'll get to three o'clock and your body's like, whatever, you wore me out. You had too many things you thought you were going to accomplish today. I give up. You better eat whatever you want. I have no willpower, no nothing left. That is real. There are studies, there's research supporting that this is how the mechanism works for um, just willpower in general and, and how we get through um, our lives and then the addiction kind of studies. So this is what you do here. Um, my therapy clients in particular, I will say, after an hour and a half of work, that's it. You've got to get up, walk around for 10 minutes. You've got to go do something that refuels you, whether it's a phone call, something fun um, that you do, um, you know, uh, looking at something funny on the internet. You've got to refill your tank a little bit throughout the day. Um, every hour, hour and a half, you've got to take a little break and you've got to make sure you're getting tons of sleep because that's the other way you refuel your willpower. Okay, so you got like roughly three techniques for the willpower and I, I reframed the way you look at, um, you know, oh my goodness, I want to be able to have like sugar or flour or whatever it is again, because I'm following this protocol that worked for me, but it's scary thinking about the future. Um, so we, we looked at the reframing that take one day at a time, take one moment at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself trying to do too much or think about too much right now. Just get through this. Just get through this and add a girl when you do and then tomorrow will come and you will deal with it as well. Okay? I believe in you and I have seen this done. All right? I said live fit. So I need y'all to live fit. Until the next time, take care.